Welcome to tutorial 2. Uh, today I'm going to have a look through basically what is the crash course that they provide openly for, uh, for you to go through on Wikipedia. So you need to download some files etc off Wikipedia but I'm going to be running through. This shows you a very basic idea of how a game is put together. Uh, we'll build a scene, have a look at a few behaviours that we add to our characters and see how things are run. So what I need to do is actually create a new game, but we're going to do it with a kit, which will be our Crash Course kit. So I come along to the Crash Course kit, uh, which I've downloaded and stored in my kit section, double click it to open, and here we go. Now, the dashboard itself, as you can see from the previous tutorial, doesn't really have a lot in it. There are some active behaviours that are created. Uh, die and pit and reload, so if you fall down a hole, your character will die, and then reload again at the start. Uh, we've got jumping, we've got stomping on enemies, we've got a behaviour that makes enemies stompable, and we also have the walking uh, functionality. We have a tile set, which is essentially the same as what was in my previous version, um, and you can have a look at the tile set itself. So we can see a particular tile. Now you'll actually see over here, once we have a look at our tiles, that we give collision bounds. So in this one, over here on the top side of the screen, you can see that this tile here collides on all sides. Now if we go down to this, we see that if this tile is placed on screen, there are no collisions. And what that means is that actors or other game pieces will not collide with it. So this is really a background piece that you can use for um, seeing in screen. Now we go down a bit more to the green one, again, a background piece. We have a look at these and we see we've got square and uh, square collisions, etc. So we can see that they all have different types of collisions and you can set them up. So if you only want it to collide with this sort of section or this section, then you can set it up in any way that you so want to. Um, but again, we're going to just deal with the basics. With the tile set, we'll keep the grassland tile set and deal with that shortly. Uh, I will go back to our dashboard. We can see we've got two actor types. We've got Mambo, who's our hero of the piece, um, or our player, who has some animations already selected for it. Okay, so he's left, right, uh, jumping left to right, walking left to right, etc. Now, um, those animations are in essence made up of particular images. So you can see this one's a moving animation. If I pick it up you can actually see that it's separated into four different pieces. And that's actually a singular file that we say has uh, four images of, upon it and you can see that there's a basic difference. So it looks like he's jumping backwards and forwards and there's a slight difference which actually provides a simple animation. Once we create our animations, which we'll do in the next tutorial more than likely, um, we will actually see that uh, the system itself decides how long to make the animation. You can play with it, etc., but it does generally do a fairly good job of it. Now, that's under the appearance section, so we could have a look at any of these to see what the go is. Um, behaviors. Now, our current uh, actor doesn't have any behaviors, so we'll deal with that shortly. We have no events. Events is sort of like a free-form pre-coding section, so if you want to add something new to it, you can do that. Uh, and our collision. This is where we will find that Mambo can actually be hit by other things. Okay, so we select it, and we can actually change and add the box and move it around, so he, coll he collides on different levels. We've got some physics as well. So we've got here, can the actor move, um, can't be pushed, has normal, can it rotate? So in other words, uh, we've got Mambo that will soon be able to move left and right about the screen, but do we want him to be able to rotate as well? And in this case, we don't, so we'll leave it as no. And is he affected by gravity? Now, of course, we want him to be affected by gravity in this jumping game. If he wasn't, he'd just shoot off the top of the screen. So we say, yes, we'll have him affected by gravity, please. And then we get, come down to the properties, and we find that his name's Mambo. Borrowed for Crash Course 1, and his group is in the players. Now there's a section of groups here. Okay, we can choose which one that he wants, but we'll leave him in the group players because he is essentially our player. Now we'll go back, we'll have a look at Pronger. We'll quickly go through him. Okay, again, there's a moving animation, left and right, etc. 
we won't go too far into that. He has no behaviours yet. There are no events um, or custom programming detailed for him. This is where he will be collided with, should he actually uh, hit somebody. Over here we can see um, that his group will fall under the same actor type. Physics, he's normal. Um, okay, uh, he don't want him rotated and sure, let's let him be affected by gravity. He won't be doing much. Okay, a basic enemy that might be jumped on just like a Goomba. So, now if we go to the settings here and we look at our groups down the bottom, we can actually see that players uh, do not collide with players or actors. They collide with tiles and enemies. Um, so if we left our uh, pronger as a player, then neither of them would collide. And in essence, what we want is Mambo to be moving along, jump on top of a pronger, pronger dies. So what we need to do is change him to one of these sorts of groups. Now, pronger's not a tile, but he can be an enemy for us. Now, enemies are a built group. Sometimes you might need to add this in, etc., which is simply as simple as going create new, um, and then detailing the name of the group and who it will collide with. So Pronger will collide with players, tiles and enemies. So what we go back here and do is we say, OK, Pronger, you're an enemy. And we place that in. Now, there's only one other thing that we need to do with Pronger, and that's we need to give him the stompable behaviour. So you can see here we've currently got no behaviours when we click on it. If I click in this box, I go, we want Pronger to be stompable. Okay, Pronger's not going to be moving, that's for a, a bit more of an advanced game, but we'll make him stompable. So we choose that, and it automatically becomes activated to him. We've got to provide an animation though. This little warning symbol says we haven't provided an animation, so we'll choose an animation. Now in our game, uh, Pronger is going to be facing left all the time, so we say that the hurt left animation is what we want. And we want a sound, so a stomped sound. We use stomp. Well, I'm not sure what sound that is, so I come up here, open the sound section, go to stomp, and press play, and we get the effect. Okay, so we'll go back to Pronger, that's what we want. Uh, the other two things, I'm happy with just the defaults. So in essence, these are things that we can modify to make our game slightly different. So that's Pronger essentially done with for the time being, so I'll save the game at this point. We'll go back and have a look at Mambo, and we'll apply some behaviours to Mambo. So we come in here. Now Mambo will want to die in the pit and reload. Okay, so if he um, falls into a pit, the game will start again. Now, because the behaviour, he now has a behaviour, we can't simply double click in the screen, middle of the screen. We have to go down here to the add behaviour. You can also see a remove behaviour, so if you don't want one anymore, you can remove it. But add behaviour brings it up again. Um, Mambo will be able to jump, so we'll double click on that. Okay, and there's some stuff we need to do here. So we select the jump key because in my settings under controls, okay, I've detailed that my jump key is the space bar. So space bar to jump. Jump force means you'll jump at 25. We'll give him the jump sound. If you want to hear that, we go to the dashboard, sounds, jump. Okay, don't really need either of those open, but that's all happy days. Now we need a an animation chosen for our jump right. So we choose our animation, jump right, okay, and jumping left, choose animation, jump left. Okay, that behavior is configured. What else do we need for Mambo? We need him to be able to stomp on enemies. So we click on that. The stompable group, okay, this actor can stomp on enemies. The jump key control is still the jump key. All good need to add one further behaviour and that behaviour is that he can walk. So the move right key will be our right key, we could check the controls but essentially these are the left and right arrows. Uh, he moves at that speed, we choose the animations. So idle right is that one, idle left is that one, walk right that one, and walk left is that one. 
Okay.